your local view on WYCU LD TV 26, serving Charlestown, New Hampshire, the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, and Central Vermont. Coming up tonight on YCU, police have made three arrests and are looking for the fourth person in connection to a gunpoint robbery in Claremont. Town meeting day is over. Find out what important votes were passed. And we'll hear from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation's Bill Boynton and how they received their funding. With more news, sports, and weather, stay tuned. It's time for YCU, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region and central Vermont. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that's happening in our area. The news on YCU, your local view. Welcome to our Wednesday edition of YCU. I'm David Carmichael. Police in Claremont, New Hampshire have made three arrests and are looking for a fourth person in the gunpoint robbery of an 84-year-old man at his home last week in Claremont. Chief Alex Scott told the Eagle Times that 18-year-old Thomas Mead of Newport and 33-year-old Jessica Russell of Claremont were arrested on Monday night. Mead is scheduled to be arraigned today on being an accessory to an armed robbery. Russell is being arraigned as well on a charge of receiving stolen property. 26-year-old Aaron Kinnery of Unity was arrested last week on charges of armed robbery and being a felon in possession of a firearm. Police said the winning lottery tickets worth $25 taken from the man's home were cashed and traced back to Kinnery. Voters passed the Stevens High School renovation bond yesterday, voting 1,399 yes to 780 no in favor of the $12.5 million bond. The 20-year bond required three-fifths majority vote. This is a reversal on the bond vote from three years ago, which saw a renovation bond for the high school fail to get three-fifths majority by just one vote. All these spending articles, including contracts for maintenance and transportation employees, paraprofessionals, and secretaries also passed. Voters additionally said yes to technology upgrades and school bus replacement. The Bellows Falls Village trustees authorized the manager last night to move forward with possible resolution or demolition options on the deteriorating structure on 35 Front Street. A barn-like carriage house and a turret on the main residence have been considered a hazard to nearby residences, raising concerns that a portion could collapse on the property's driveway. Officials say that they are taking steps to remedy the issue. An order was issued to the property owner on January 24th to rehabilitate the carriage barn up to building safety code or, in lieu of that, remove and properly dispose of the materials to stabilize the site. Officials reported in a memorandum that they have not heard from the building owners after mailing a certified letter in early February. The condition of the carriage barn appears unchanged since the date of the report, with the exception of the posting of some caution tape. The Kearsarge Regional School District Collective Bargaining Agreement was passed by a 60% vote yesterday. This is pretty revolutionary for schools to do. Teachers' compensation will now be based on their performance and not be tied to their years of service. Excellence in teaching and instruction should be recognized. There should be a mechanism to recognize that, and this model provides for that mechanism. There will be five domains of performance to reflect the teachers, including student growth, instruction, planning preparation, curriculum, and self-reflection. Four Vermont homeowners in Jamaica and one in Hartford will have their Irene damaged properties, which were ineligible for a federal disaster program, bought out with the help of a different grant program. The state will pay up to 75% of the value of those properties using money from a community development block grant to buy out those homes and any others found in the future to be ineligible for disaster mitigation program run by FEMA. Vermont Fish and Wildlife says now is the time for people to take down their bird feeders as bears begin to wake up from their winter hibernations. The department's call comes after a record number of human bear encounters in the past few years with more bears using bird feeders as their food source. Once they do that, they say, the bears become dependent on it and often have to be killed. For more local stories, be sure to check out our website at ycunow.com and also please like our Facebook page. After the break, Heather Clough from the Lebanon Opera House tells us about some events going on this spring. The YCU News continues in a moment. 